talk about how you can make a documentation website, uh, book, uh, using uh, Bookdown as well as GitHub Actions. Um, so I put over here the link to the Google, um, the Google document with uh, the notes and things like that. Oh, so we'll be using um, mainly these two packages, Bookdown and BioCities. So you'll want to um, install those um, in the background. So I put a lot of like links here. Um, first of all, before we get to um, uh, book websites, um, Emily Sabor has this um, website over here with a tutorial on how to make um, our markdown websites. Um, so that will be like a website like the one we're looking at right now, where um, um, you have a little like home over here at the top. You can have a few different um, tabs if you want. It has a little link here to um, uh, GitHub or, um, and a few other things. Um, so these are like simple websites that you can just scroll. They maybe have a menu here on the left. You can't really do much in terms of interact interaction with with these websites. Um, um, but these are websites made with R, um, where you um, basically write like a, a markdown file. You can have some R code in it. Um, and you can have a few of them saying like, um, in this case, we could have like um, an HTML file, HTML file for home, another one for about. And for each of these files, we're gonna create like a little markdown file that creates them. Um, so um, our markdown websites are maybe from around 2015 or so. Um, so they've been around for a while. And we have an example of such a website here. So this is the example, the Speakeasy example analysis website. So you'll see here it has a similar flavor where we have tabs at the top. Each of these tabs is a different markdown file. Um, and you have some things here, like for example, we have some code um, that we can show or hide. Um, 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 so, for documentation purposes, they work pretty well. Um, as you can explain in words what you want, what you're trying to do, but then also show the commands that you're that you're using. Um, um, and so you can make this um, type of websites um, on your computer. Um, if we go to um, um, to the source files of this uh, speakeasy example. Um, sorry, um, here there's this uh, site configuration that specifies like which are the HTML files that we want, which is what we were seeing on that um, example website from, or tutorial website from Emily Sabor. Um, what are the files we want? What is the theme we want? Um, and then uh, for each of those files, we have like, um, uh, you have a little like um, uh, RMD file. So like there's this bootcamp intro RMD file, uh, which is like, I mean, here it has like the actual text of what we wanna say and some code. Um, so um, once you make a website like this, you can render it in your computer and then you'll have all these HTML files that you can share in different ways. One easy way to share things is through the GitHub uh, pages branch of a repository. Um, we've seen before how if, uh, GitHub provides us um, free access to, to documentation websites. Um, uh, we don't have to pay for hosting and things like that um, or pay anything extra. Um, so we go to the GitHub pages branch here we'll see that this is where we have all those HTML files that were uh, generated with R. Um, and in this case, there's also some other directories um, uh, that were created in the process. Um, these are the actual files that are um, behind the scenes of the, of the documentation website that we were looking at. Um, um, so, all of that works pretty well, um, but when you're um, 
depending on how much code you're running, it can take a while to run that code. Um, and so at some point, you'll want to uh, automate that process. That's where GitHub Actions comes into play. And so we have here on the speakeasy example, when we go to GitHub workflows, we see that we have a little YAML file, which um, this one was um, it comes from BioCities. It was adapted from BioCities from a much earlier version of it. Um, and um, what it does here is like, this one in particular is like using back after 3.12. And eventually what it does is um, um, it runs the um, markdown render site function, which creates all those HTML files. Once it has all those HTML files, um, then it deploys them into the GitHub pages branch. So um, this function, um, um, our markdown render site actually creates um, um, files in the directory. We've um, so far here we've we've made sure that those files are under the docs directory, um, and so that directory, the docs directory, is the one that we say that we specify here. We call actions that we want to deploy as a GitHub Pages branch, GH Pages. Um, now, um, some things are a bit more complicated, like this particular demonstration needs a bunch of packages. So we need to make sure we install all, all the dependencies that we need. Um, and that's why you see like all these commands over here for, in, for installing those packages, including, for example, the Jaffe Lab package that is available only on, on GitHub. Um, so um, this is where like um, things get a bit more advanced where um, when we start to edit um, GitHub Actions workflow files in order to um, get them to do what we want, which in this case is um, um, running the R markdown render site function and then deploying the, um, the output of it. Um, so that's one example website, um, but that was made with R markdown websites. So now let's look at a, a different example. So this is the, um, um, the pop top um, documentation website or the top many petition pipeline. Um, and you'll see here, this one has like now some figures. Um, uh, we have the R session information. Um, and at this point, this website is no longer an R markdown website. It's um, a book down website. Um, so it's made with a particular R package. Um, and this allows us to now um, interact with it as a as a as a book. Um, and so, for example, we can search. Um, we can self search the word install, for example. Um, and this will let me um, where that word is mentioned. Um, we can change the font size. We can change the uh, the font type, uh, the background color. Um, and there's a few other uh, things we could do. Um, um, and so for your users, um, the ability to search inside of the website uh, might be particularly um, helpful. Beyond that, um, like, I mean, this, uh, these font uh, options are maybe nice for accessibility, um, um, but in general, it's, um, uh, it's going to um, end up looking kind of similar to those other R, R websites that we were looking at before. But instead of having like a menu on the top, the menu will be on the left. And if you want to hide it, we can hide it with this like button over here with a, with a little um, um, horizontal lines. Um, so um, a website like that um, also has its own GitHub Actions workflow. So this one in particular, this repository is private. So um, if you're looking at this video in the public, you might not be able to see, to access this. But um, there's a lot of things that happened before, but eventually what, what we do is instead of um, our markdown um, render site, in this case, we use the function book down render book. Um, um, in, we're saving the files in the underscore book directory. 
Um, and then we tell with the, this deploy action, we we'll say like, we also want to deploy things to the GitHub pages branch, but in this case, we'll uh, deploy the book directory. Um, this particular case, that book directory was inside another directory called documentation. Um, um, so that's how we end up um, automatically uh, uh, using GitHub Actions to, to update the website once we update any of the R markdown files. So we don't manually update any of those HTML files. Um, if we look at the top, uh, this one is based on an earlier version of Viacities, which automatically detects whether what's the latest release. Um, so this earlier version was maybe nice in some ways for that, since so it's always going to be using the, the latest uh, release version. Um, um, and so the, the configuration for Bookdown is a bit simpler than what we saw for, um, um, for the R Markdown websites. That's because we, we basically only say like, hey, we want a site that is made with Bookdown, Bookdown site, and the document class will be Book. Um, the, um, you can always have more detailed configuration files. Um, but in general, if we look at the, this documentation directory, uh, the easiest thing is just to use numbers for your files, and that will specify in what order they show up. Um, um, uh, that means that if you add a, a file in the middle, you might need to rename files. But um, I'll show you in a little bit that I do have a script for that. Um, Bookdown, in general, um, you use a single um, um, pound sign uh, for chapters. Um, um, and then I use two for like internal components of the chapters and three or more for, for even smaller pieces. So if I go back to that website over here, um, I was looking at setup details, right? Um, and that one is over here, chapter two, setup details. So uh, I typically recommend they have a single chapter per R markdown file. You could, of course, write it all in a single R markdown file, um, but I find it easier to, to separate them, especially if you're gonna make something that's pretty long. Um, so that's um, that website. Um, for a public example, here we have the documentation website for the team which this one is like a lot longer than, than the other ones. It has 20 chapters, uh, but again, it's a book done website. Um, um, and like, um, this one does have a little like uh, web icon logo, for example, that the other ones didn't have. Um, you can see how we have embedded YouTube videos. Um, there's this little piece over here that is like highlighting in red. So you wanted to find like exactly how to do that highlight in red, you can, um, you can look at the source files for this one. Um, so if I show you the GitHub actions for it, um, this one is again based on BioCities, on, on a different version of, of BioCities. And in this case, it's using the latest Bioconductor release version 3.17. Um, um, we don't really need to test it on Mac and Windows. Um, that's because I just want to make the website at this point. Um, you could, of course, um, decide to test it on, on more than one. Um, and you'll see here at the end, we say like, okay, let's render that book with book down um, and, um, and deploy it to GitHub pages. Um, in this case, the, the output directory is underscore book. Now, all of these scripts that I've shown you have this specific line called um, here where we're creating a, um, a hidden file called no Jekyll. That's something that is specific to GitHub. Um, if you don't specify that on your GitHub actions, sorry, in, in your GitHub pages branch, it's going to assume that you're deploying what's called a Jekyll website. And we're basically with this, by creating that little hidden file, we're telling GitHub that no, we're not creating a Jekyll, Jekyll website. Um, um, now, something about um, like a, a website like this, this package in general is, or this website is not using many packages. It's only using book down, session information for the repository information, and then biosy style for some links. It's kind of easy to just put it as a single line over here. 
And because it's, these dependencies are fairly small, uh, they, um, I don't mind paying the time that it takes to install them every single time we run um, the GitHub Actions workflow. Uh, but that won't be the case for, um, for larger projects. Um, so actually, before I go to the larger project, let me show you also um, these two files. The book down configuration um, is very similar to the one we saw before, but you can see here that like it does have this um, lines of code, lines five and seven for specifying um, that Fabi icon, that little like symbol that you see over there. Um, and then it does have like some um, further lines here for specifying like, hey, I want to have um, some information on that website. In this case, I want to have the code for having this, this, uh, map, um, this map for users on the bottom, as well as um, um, GitHub, um, sorry, no, Google, uh, Google Analytics tracking. Um, and I forget what this uh, style CSS did, uh, but it probably changed some, some styling at some point. Um, so that's a bit more advanced than other configuration files we saw for Booktown, um, but not too much. And then finally, this is a script that I have for uh, re renumbering chapters um, um, to, uh, it's fairly, it's based on um, uh, regular expressions. You find all the files that end with RMD for markdown, um, but that start with a digit. Um, and then you say like, starting on a specific number, I want to rename and rename all of those things afterwards. And I want to rename them with um, two digits. Of course, you have more than two digits. Let's so say you have a hundred chapters, you might need to increase that. Um, um, so, um, um, we, we've, so far we've seen like documentation websites where like we're not actually running a ton of code. I mean, the, the one where we're running more code was a speakeasy example one. Um, but here, like uh, this type of websites, this is um, how I make like websites for courses. So in this particular course here, we're installing like a bunch of packages. Um, I don't know, 10 or 15 of them. And there is a lot of ex there's a lot of code that is being drawn. Uh, like it makes like these heat maps and it does a lot of differential expression downloads a bunch of data. So this, all of this code is, is not gonna run in a few minutes. It might take like half an hour or something like that. Um, um, so this is a more advanced website, but it's, the idea is the same. If you go to the GitHub Actions workflow for it, uh, it's again based on BioCities. This one was using R, sorry, Bioconductor 316, um, um, which go all the way down here. Um, it's also using um, book down render book. Now, since earlier versions of those other websites, things have changed for deploying things um, a little bit. So, um, uh, but in the end is similar of like, hey, I wanna use the, um, uh, the book directory and deploy it to the GitHub pages um, branch. Um, so there's a lot of other steps. Now, if we scroll a bit further up, you'll notice that this GitHub Actions workflow doesn't specify like the list of packages that we want to install. Um, um, so at this point, we're actually reusing some of that, um, some of the things that make BioCities work well. So there was something on the... Uh, uh, Bernie, um, the link to this Google Doc is on the Google Sheet for the uh, for the Art Club. That's over here in slides material. Um, cool. Um, so um, yeah, so we're reusing these lines of code are exactly the ones of, uh, that are used on a typical BioCities um, GitHub Actions workflow for a package. And so what is this, what is any of this thing using? And so what it says here is like, it's using this uh, function called install local. Um, and so that's for installing a local package. And then it says like, if I want the, all those dependencies to be installed uh, with dependencies equals true. 
So how do how does remote figure out all of this information? How does it like know what are the packages that are the dependencies? So if we go to the beginning of the, this project, we have actually here a description file. A description file is part of what uh, what are part of the key files for making an R package. And so here we're saying like under imports, these are all the packages that um, we are going to need. Um, and so, so far you can say like, well, this is very similar, making this list over here and then relying on the installation to um, what we were seeing earlier here, for example, for um, the by CDs team VS website where we uh, have a command here, like listing manually, like what are all the packages we want to install? So you can say like, well, what's the difference, right? Like um, it's just maybe a styling difference. The, um, the difference lies in that um, by using this type of uh, more advanced um, um, uh, configuration, um, um, all of this, um, these packages will be installed in, on, the, on the machine. And if we go, um, if we go here to the cache step, um, sorry, there's a few of them, uh, this one, um, we're actually gonna cache, um, I think that's how you pronounce it in English, we're gonna cache uh, all the files that we have here installed. And so in particular, we're gonna cache all the packages that were installed. And so that this means that like GitHub Actions is going to save a, um, a file that um, we can reuse that has all the so all the software that we have installed, all the packages that we have installed. That way, if we, we run it again, um, um, instead of uh, it will recognize um, that it has all of those files, and then um, remote install will notice like, hey. Um, um, all those files haven't been updated, sorry, uh, are updated, um, and, um, and then it won't restyle any of them. Um, and so that means if you have a very long list of R packages that you're installing, that maybe could take like 45 minutes to compile the first time, the second time you won't need to spend those 45 minutes installing and compiling them. Um, so that means that um, most of the time, uh, when you run your GitHub Actions workflow, uh, most of that time will be spent um, on um, just running the code that you have. So here, let's see if we can, uh, yeah, this, I mean, I mean this, this one is from February of this year, so the logs are no longer available, um, um, but we'll, figure, we'll see this in a little bit. So that's all of the background, uh, right, all the examples. So, um, and uh, for more on Bookdown, I put here the link for the, uh, 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 a website that is made with Bookdown for documenting Bookdown, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Um, so this is like, has a lot of nice features. Um, um, something that I do wanna highlight is that if you wanna make cross references across chapters, you can make them, but the syntax is a bit complicated. It's a bit like, um, um, like uh, like a link in Markdown, but uh, instead of the second part being parentheses, the second part will be square brackets. Um, and then you also need to know what's the um, what's the actual text of the thing that you're linking to. Um, so th this this stuff is a little bit complicated, uh, or I mean, a little bit different. Um, it just takes a, some time getting used to or making these cross references. So I'll, I'll make one, and um, I do have a, the need to make one for real, uh, not just for demonstration purposes. That's because um, Diana, Renee, and I will soon be uh, teaching a few days as part of this uh, course at the Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory. So um, first, you just need to open our studio. And then if you go to File, New Project, we'll create a new project over here. Um, I'll select new directory, um, just new project. Um, I'm gonna create it as a subdirectory of my code. And I'll call this like Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory. Um, 
uh, um, RSAT genome scale. Um, I also create a Git repos uh, repository for it. Um, boom. So now, um, now that we have this, um, I'll go to um, um, let's see what I want to do. Um, Yeah, I wanted to configure the project options. Um, so I'll say no to saving our data files, no to um, uh, not to restoring them, not to saving them, and not to saving the history. Um, and then, yeah, four tabs. And I'll make sure that um, everything is saved on um, POSIX. And that way, like, uh, there won't be issues across operating systems. So now that we have that little setup, um, I'm going to use that trick of making a description file. So this is where I'll use the BioCities package and use BioC description to create a little description file. Um, oh, you didn't like it because I have a the name that I chose for things is not. Um, uh, compatible with an R package. Um, okay. Um, it doesn't um, like underscores. Yeah, our pack uh, underscores are not allowed in our package names. I forgot that. Um, that. That's uh, good. So we know now. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Um, That's key two characters only. Yeah. So let's see. I'll just. Um, I'll just go to the BioCities code. Oh, sorry. Um, I'll go to the. Let's go to the. I'll do this manually. I don't have it. I don't have a template for description. Like, let me remember how I see this does this. Uh, okay. Um, you know what? I'll just manually copy this description file. I mean, I could make a new project. Uh, um, um, and uh, with, that it has valid names, but I actually like my name. Um, uh, so I'll put all of that there. Um, hello. Hi. Mm -hmm. We'll edit. Some of this. So the title here will be um, what was the name of the course? Let me just put in something. Um, 
uh, a bit there. So here we'll say like, what are the packages we really need? Um, so um, we definitely need um, Hookdown for making the website and session info. And later on, we might add more packages. Um, um, actually, um, I know we'll re use the recon tree package, for example. So I'll add that there. Um, cool. So uh, now that we have that legal description file, um, I'm going to use the functions here for creating the GitHub action workflow. Um, um, so among the options, I want package down to be true. Um, we don't really need a test, so I'll set that to false. Um, and uh, we could use like, if we wanted to, we could set up a Docker image like we did uh, recently for, for other things. So that will create that, that GitHub um, uh, directory uh, that has a GitHub Actions workflow. Um, so we have some of that setup going on, but we haven't edited yet to make it compatible with um, a booked on website. So here I'll just um, make a little commit for our saying like, um, this is the initial setup. Can you please clarify what is the the file G? ML? YAML? YAML. Yeah, that's the one that controls the GitHub Actions workflow, oh. right? So we'll edit it in a little bit. But before we get to that, we need to make like an index file. Um, and so here I'm gonna reuse um, some of the information we have over here. Um, so I'll just copy some of that into this index file. Um, um, I'm going to make a new R markdown file. Um, uh, specifies a lot of things, but I'll just overwrite that. Um, we'll change the GitHub repository so it'll be close power as a gene of scale. Um, have that as a little index RMD. Um, you notice here I'm using these two files, map and style. So I'm just gonna copy those files um, uh, into it. You could, of course, I mean, in my case, I already have them on my computer. Uh, if you were doing this um, elsewhere, you could um, uh, download them from GitHub. So I'll just use some of those files here. And so now we can um, click the neat button um, and that will create our little book over here. Um, it's pretty bare bones, but it created it. Um, and so um, I'll just say over here that um, we know that the from there. Um, oh. Now it's, you can see create this uh, underscore book directory. I actually don't want to, uh, to version control it. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to ignore it. Uh, uh, that's because GitHub Actions will be the one updating the, the contents of it. Uh, cool. 
So now, now we have um, the beginning of our website, but we haven't edited the GitHub Actions workflow to actually build that website. So um, here we have like run package on true, et cetera. Um, just to make it simple, I'm going to like find and replace anything that says package down by book down. Uh, um, so, and here we see like we're running on our, uh, sorry, uh, by conductor 317, which is the latest release. And in this case, we're running on Mac and Windows. Um, and so, because this will be for a course, I actually do want it to test it on all operating systems to make sure that like whatever code we write, um, people will be able to run it on those operating systems. Now, there's a few other things that happen below that we don't necessarily need. So after all the dependencies are installed or the packages, um, dependencies on different operating systems, the version, the dependencies uh, for things are installed here. Um, um, we do want to install Bookdown, um, but we don't want to run our command check because um, we're not actually making a package. So I'll comment that, that out. Um, we don't want to run by a C check either because um, it's also not a package for black conductor. Um, cool. So, um, um, we also don't necessarily need to install it. Install it. This is not a package. Um, so those are the few lines we need to comment on. Now we need to make sure this stuff matches what we have um, on the other um, uh, examples that I've shown you. So if I go back to uh, the GitHub Actions link or this other course, um, let's just uh, copy paste the lines here for um, making the website. So these two lines over here. Um, so, uh, we'll say like, okay, uh, render the book with a book down and then add a little um, um, JQL file. Now, um, instead of deploying the docs directory, in this case, we'll deploy the underscore book directory. Um, everything else should, in theory, work. Um, so let's give it a try. Um, cool. So, uh, Uh, I also forgot to create the repository, so I'll use, use this, use GitHub to then um, push it to, push it there. Oh, you end up calling it the CLH course, um, which I can rename later. Um, yeah, so that created the, um, all these files on GitHub, because um, I guess it's the first time we created it, it didn't trigger um, any uh, GitHub action runs. So I'll just um, update uh, something here and say like, hello. Um, there's one more thing I realize right now. I'm working on the main branch um, instead of the develop branch. Uh, that's why, like, these things are only working on the develop branch. Um, um, uh, Mm -hmm. 
I did this the other day, so I know. Um, This is a command I was looking for. There's a command in use this that you can use for renaming your branch. Right. So at this point now, I did trigger the GitHub Actions run um, because it is on the develop branch. So um, let me check what's happening. Um, um, first, it needs to like do all of the initialization of the Docker image, um, and then eventually it's going to install all the dependencies. Now, since I put recountry as one of the first dependencies, recountry takes has a, quite a few dependencies, so it's going to take a bit of time. This first time to run more time than what we have right now left on the session. Um, but at some point, if it all works correctly, it should like um, build a book down website and deploy it. Um, and so you might want to come back to this repository later, um, 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 just to see if it, if it has changed things. Um, in the meantime, I will rename this um, uh, to, to match the name that we had. Um, um, oh, so um, the idea is uh, this does involve a bit more work than just making an R package with BioCities because you do need to understand a bit more what's happening on the YAML file, right? Um, but hopefully you can see that it, uh, it doesn't take a lot of work to just edit. Basically, we're, we're commenting out things. Um, uh, the main parts that we need to change are like how the website is built um, and then uh, what folder is the one that actually contains the those HTML files that we want to deploy uh, and make public? Um, um, a lot of the other lines you don't necessarily need to change them. Um, um, boom. So um, we'll know um, we'll know later if there were any errors or things like that. Um, but yeah, here you can see like on Ubuntu it already in, initiated the, the Docker from Bioconductor and it has all the files you need for Bioconductor 317. And it's currently installing all the dependencies needed for Recon Tree. It's trying to install them fast, um, but it's still taking time. Um, and so if it all works correctly, the next time that we run it, there will be a cache with all of these uh, packages installed. And this step will be a lot faster. Um, so, um, 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 then it's just a matter of, of focusing on the content of what you want to document or describe. Um, and so we'll probably end up with making more um, our markdown files um, here and like um, testing the code for um, for this. Um, um, yeah, for this course, really. Uh, Windows already aired out. Uh, uh, oh. At some point, you try to install the package. I guess I have too many parentheses here. Um, right. So I know how to fix that. Um, I just delete one of these parentheses. You can always check whether this code runs by like copy pasting it into your R session. Um, I have still one more. I have too many parentheses there. Um, oh, 
So these websites themselves are actually hosted on GitHub then? Mm -hmm. Yeah, on the GitHub pages branch. Mm -hmm. oh. So there was an error. Um, um, and now, and now Ubuntu has gone into that same error that Windows got. Windows is typically faster in some dependencies. That's why it was the first one to be like, hey, I can't run. Um, uh, but you know, um, now we know about that and we triggered a new run. So in a few more minutes, we'll know if it, if it had an error or not. Um, yeah. Um, if you, I do recommend, for example, um, on this index file, uh, specifying like what are the packages people should install, but then also including the R session information. Um, um, and so we go to the one for this other course. Uh, um, I do have some of these lines here for like how to basically load all of the packages in the course. And then at the end, I print the session information. Um, and then I say like, what was the time this book was last updated? Um, so all of these things are like, um, um, can be useful. Um, cool. So um, I think that's it for today. Do people have any questions? From all the links that you share, mm -hmm. um, what would be a good start, the, the easier way to start with this from all the these links that you are sharing in the, in the resources? Um, I think watching the video will be the easiest thing to do. <laughs> right. Watching the video more slowly. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I mean, they're incremental, and I you might always want to adapt the latest version. Um, so we're going to be working on this repository. Um, this one that is like currently being built. So eventually this could be the latest version, right? But um, I showed you the history so you can understand like the, the different pieces and okay? like uh, what are the differences? Um, and there's, I mean, there's more of them, but these are like examples. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Um, all right, I think that's it for today. See you, have a good weekend.